If you're a fan of the PlayStation line of consoles, one of the things you've probably been waiting for for some time is some sort of follow-up to the PlayStation Vita to give you that handheld PlayStation experience that you really want to love. Now, Sony has their official solution in the PlayStation Portal, and quite honestly, it's okay, but definitely leaves a lot to be desired. There's stuttering and buffering issues, lag and latency issues, disconnection issues, and a whole lot more. Plus, try to get your hands on one of these right now, kinda hard, and a 200 bucks, a little bit overpriced. Well, that is where the team over at GameSir is hoping to offer a more reasonable, better performing solution, and this is the GameSir G8 Galileo. And this is designed to work in conjunction with your smartphone. And at under $100, it's less than half the price of what you'll get with the PlayStation Portal. And realistically, depending on your phone, could be a much higher quality display too. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this out of the box, we're gonna check out some of the features, and we're going to see, is the issue with the Portal, the Portal? Is it their service? A combination of the two? And is this a better value for you? Let's go get started. So here we have the Game Sir Galileo Type-C. I'm assuming there's probably a Lightning or Type Lightning or something like that for iPhones. Um, this is the G8, there was a G7 and a couple others before it. Uh, on the back here you can see that it does have Hall Effect Stick, Smooth and Longevity, Plug and Play Adaptive USB-C Connector, Ultra Low Latency, Install with Ease, Responsive Membrane Buttons, Precision Tuned Hall Effect Analog Triggers on the uh, top of it here too, uh, two mappable back buttons, laser engraved textured grips, charging and 3.5 millimeter pass-through port, interesting, and tactile D-pad, crisp and comfortable. Uh, let's go ahead, let's open this up. As you can tell, I was ready for that, I already had my X-Acto knife out. So it says here, measure what can be measured and make measurable what extends beyond. Okay. So in here we have the controller itself. Let's see what's in here. Looks like a GameSir decal, just in game, and your instruction manual. Holy cats. All right, we'll look through that in a few moments. Uh, that's all that's in there. We do have the grip itself. Take off the little donuts. Dude, I like that. That's super comfortable. This is what the Switch Lite should have been, honestly. No kickstand on the back, so that's important to note. And then that's kind of what I figured that I just had a spring tensioner to set your phone in. Analog sticks feel really good. D-pad feels decent. This is well put together. I do wish, like, I love the fact Super Nintendo, purple and and violet, or, or you know, the dark purple, light purple. Um, man, I wish they would have gone concave, convex. Uh, on the bottom here, USB-C port, and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Additionally, it looks like we've got some additional, additionally, additional, additional, additionally, um, some different sticks that we can put on here if you so desire. Um, so that is neat. Anything else under the rest of the box? Nope, that is it. So what I want to check and see on here is how to swap the controller sticks. Oh, the face plates are magnetic, so these guys should pop right off, in theory. Oh, dude, that's super easy. Pop that out. Pop that in, and then you can see the little magnets on the inside there. Dude, that's fantastic. Oh, that's so good. That's really good. I like that a lot. Now, I actually prefer the original stick that was on here, so we're gonna pop this one off and put that one back on. But that's so good. I'm liking that. That's fantastic. All right, so let's 
slide those aside. So it says here, customization via GameSir app. Download GameSir app at GameSir.hk on phone or scan the QR code here. Use GameSir app to, for firmware upgrades, button testing, sticks and trigger zone adjustments, etc. So very cool. So here is my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And the one thing I want to see, can I leave my case on? Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's flexible. Sweet. Oh, that's such a smart design. I am not thinking I'm gonna be able to leave the case on though. <laughs> and it will take a brick of a phone. It will work with phablets like the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, uh, but it's not gonna work with the case on. So let's pop that out real quick. And it already shows a USB device on here. Oh, dude, that's sweet. Check that out. That's so good. That's so, so good. All right, I want to see, can I remote play with my PS5 on this? All right, so we do have everything launched in the app here. And I have to say what I'm seeing here versus what I'm seeing through the camera, not the same. This is beautiful. Um, but I mean, part of that is the fact that the Samsung S22 Ultra has a beautiful display. Um, feeling a little bit laggy though, I will admit that, kind of going through here, like I can feel some stuttering and slow down. Um, and I do have, uh, I'll go into my phone itself so you can see that power saving is turned off. Um, let me actually go into here, because I think there's a setting. Um, see I guess not I thought that there was like a game mode setting or something like that there is not okay oh no controller battery level is low let's hook this up and charge it I did not realize that it had its own separate battery we'll take care of that boom done charging so we'll go into a race real quick and see up oh how this actually performs. Oh. You can see we do have the uh, network error there. We'll just go to Daytona with the pick em up. Actually, let's do the Sunday Cup because I want to change car. We'll do that one and enter. Now, one thing you do lose on this is the adaptive triggers. That is something that uh, this does not have that the DualSense controller has. Now, one thing this does offer that the portal does not is the fact that I can just use my Bluetooth headphones with this if I want to. Uh, closing rate very fast. I'm able to make you know finite adjustments here without much of an issue. And one of the reasons why I took the oval here was you know I didn't know what the network connectivity was going to be like since we were getting some you know rather early errors there. So I want to try something a little bit easier to start. That's working fine. We're going to go into the switcher. What about some Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Now I have some setting adjustments here. I always show controller. No, I do not want that. I didn't know if I could dumb down like the resolution or something like that to help improve the throughput and bandwidth on this. So I will say that the L or the R trigger does not feel nearly as good here as on a dual sense controller to like there I was holding it down and it was not uh, it was not web swinging yeah I mean this looks good that's the nice thing is the you know from a graphical standpoint it definitely looks decent I, I am it's almost like it's got a little bit too much dead band 
I mean, from a graphical intensity standpoint, this is, you know, a beautiful game that is looking great on this. Yeah, there's the stutter I was expecting. Yep. Definitely having some stuttering issues there. I'm gonna turn down our lights a little bit, see if we can't make it a little bit easier for you to see as well. It's feeling okay. Um, it's still, I think this is kind of hammering home the fact we're gonna go home here now, we're gonna change games. I think it's hammering home that a lot of the issues with the portal are more related to the service than the device. Let's go home. Let's try DuckTales, the afternoon collection. I will say, I love the form factor of this. This is super comfortable. Um, again, this is like, if Nintendo can make the Switch 2 like this, sign me up. I'm gonna play some DuckTales, because I wanna check and see too how the D-pad is. D-pad is decent. It feels a little bit, I guess the best way I could put it is springy. I'm gonna try the analog stick now. That to me is better just because of the placement of my hands. Yeah, this is playing well. Overall, not too shabby there. You know, next up, I want to see just like some native Android apps, how those work. All right, so here is Sonic the Hedgehog 1, and this is actually the native Android app. I think this is playing great. I will say I think it's playing better than the, uh, than the PlayStation app was, that's for sure. I think that just underscores that that app is not ready for prime time, not even close. Yeah, this is doing exactly what I would want it to do. Button presses are responsive, the analog stick is working fantastically. As you can see here, I've actually launched Xbox Game Pass Cloud Gaming, uh, and this is MLB The Show 23. And one of the things for me, I'm not going to play a whole lot of this, but pitching and hitting, I can always tell uh, if there's any issues with lag, latency, delay, because of the way that I have the game set up. I will tell you, at least thus far, this is a hell of a lot smoother than uh, what PlayStation is offering on theirs. This looks beautiful. I am thrilled with this. <gasps> and the... Like leg and latency. Look at that that pitch meter. That's spot on. I am loving that. A little bit late there, but that's nothing like I've done that before, so. Oh, that's that's absolutely per perfect. That's everything that I want it to be. Popped him up. Garrett Mitchell out there in center field. Too quickly down. That's what I just said, there are two down. Jammed him on the inside. Check, swing, got him to go around. Let's see if we can get three up, three down. Ooh. Got him below the knees, buckled in there, struck him out. Let's see what we can do here. Now, one thing I just noticed, there is no rumble. Ooh, popped him up. Yeah, it's really, I don't like the lack of rumble. We're gonna have to make them work for this a little bit more because uh, we can't go down on three pitches. 
Had to take that one. Had to take it. Right down the heart of the plate on that one. Struck three, struck him out. All right. We'll just do squadrons real quick. So what are my overall feelings on this? Um, comfortable as hell. Um, absolutely love, love, love the comfort level on here. Um, I like the button placements. I do wish that I had concave and convex uh, buttons on there, but I can get uh, around that. That's not a major issue here. I think the difference in performance here between um, the Xbox Game Pass and between, um, we'll just do a quick match here. Uh, you know, between Game Pass and between um, PlayStation is just night and day. Um, the Xbox is such a superior online platform to play with. And yes, this is me who hates the Xbox, generally speaking, saying something really, really nice about the Xbox. Um, I think this is a much more robust and overall better experience. Uh, we're just going to use an X-Wing here. Um, so what do I not like about it? So I don't like the fact that there's no rumble. That I, I didn't think that that was going to um, throw me off as much as it did. Um, the, the Hall Effect sticks feel great. Um, the triggers could use a little bit less dead band, but I think I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'll go into the app itself and, and screw around with those settings a bit. I think the sticks feel fantastic, and I think this is just a great overall to play if playing, you know, console quality games on the go is important to you and you don't want to use a Switch. If you have a PlayStation, if you have an Xbox, uh, this is terrific. Um, and I think too, your mileage may vary a little bit based on what you have for a phone. Having a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, it's not the latest and greatest, but it's also not super old either. There we go. Holy crap. There's a few ships coming in. Um, yeah, I will say just from a platform standpoint, this has proven to me that the issues with the portal are more related to the network and the service than the system itself because, if anything, this was less stable than the portal was. Um, but at the same time, this also offers things that the portal does not give me, like the ability to um, use my own Bluetooth headphones. I'm, I'm so tired of Sony, like, keeping that behind, you know, a paywall where you have to use their headphones. So what do I think of the games for Galileo G8? This thing is phenomenal. So, a little backstory about me. I hate playing mobile games on a touchscreen. It just, it's never worked out very well. Something like this, however, it's compact. It still gives me a beautiful display. It works well. Uh, I love the fact that it's Hall Effect sensors and you can go ahead too and swap out those sticks and really personalize it for you. This is a great overall package and it's not just compatible with PlayStation, it's compatible with Xbox, it's compatible with Android games as well. This is a really well thought out, well put together package. Now, one thing before we wrap up I did want to do is just compare the size between the PlayStation Portal and this. And you can see that with a Samsung Galaxy S22, about 10 to 15% narrower. Um, the display also, quite a bit smaller too so you do get more real estate on this but this is something that it's half the price you get to use your existing device and you can use bluetooth headphones you don't have to use the playstation exclusive bluetooth headphones screw you sony for doing that um, and the other thing with something like this too is it does underscore that a lot of the problems with the portal 
is network related. PlayStation, you guys have to do something to beef up your infrastructure. The fact that I could play games like I was, MLB The Show 23 played flawlessly through Game Pass on this. There is no excuse, especially when you have bought other companies in the past, specifically for cloud-based gaming. Why does your service suck so bad? Because that's the issue. Hardware-wise, I think this has a lot of superior options to this. The haptic feedback on the triggers. I love that. This doesn't have rumble. This does. Um, so that is part of the gaming experience that was missing. Less than half the cost of that. I just can't get over that. Um, plus, higher resolution as well, because you can use 4K displays if you have it through your smartphone. You're locked at 1080p. And again, Bluetooth headphones. Can't use anything but Sony's. You kind of get where I'm going here. Um, will I use this more than my portal? Possibly. That is a distinct possibility. Just because I don't have to carry around that huge honking thing and I can play on more than just the PlayStation using this. And that is one of the things that is really excellent and I commend GameSir for doing just their homework on this. They have designed a really great unit here. Now, I haven't used the Backbone or any of those devices. This is literally the first experience I've had with a game grip for a smartphone and this is excellent. I'm absolutely loving everything about it. Now, if you do want to pick one of these up, I will have a link down below in a pinned comment where you can get one through our affiliate link through our Amazon storefront. Now, I do also want to thank GameSir for sending us one of these for testing purposes. Now, they're not seeing this ahead of time. They're not screening the content. They have no say into what I say. These are my honest thoughts, and this is pretty awesome. Now, if you want to see some of the other videos that we've done, like for example, if you want to check out our full-blown review on the PlayStation Portal, I'll have that here on screen right now. Make sure you check it out and see just exactly why this may be your superior option.